Okay. Right, we're live. We're live. Hi, everyone. I'm very, very excited. Um, I just want to say hello and welcome to our email and more presentation. We're talking about email trends today. And today is our last episode for the season. So thank you for making it this far with us. And I'm really excited that we're going to be talking about something really interesting, which is email marketing trends. As always, I'm your moderator and host, Adiola Sol, and I'm the senior consultant at Holistic Email Marketing. Um, for those of you that are new to our show, on every episode of Email and More, we bring a different topic with our selected panel of experts. And today we're talking about email marketing trends, as I've kind of said several, several, several times. This is your show, so please do not be silent. This is the last one, so let's go out with a bang. Throw your questions into the ring. We are ready. We are hydrated. We've got our notes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. See, the ladies are hydrated. So you make, the, look, we're all proving just how hydrated we are. So get your questions in. Do not dilly dally. This is the last one. We've got a great team here. So please get your questions in. Right. So I want to give a special thanks to our sponsors. So this series of email and ball is brought to you by our gold sponsors, Iterable and Engage, and our silver sponsors, RPE Origin and Actito. So thank you guys. Thank you so much for your support because without you, this show just wouldn't be what it is today. So thank you. And for anyone who wants to go back and see some of our previous episodes, we've got series one and two on YouTube. And I'm hoping that my lovely, mysterious, holistic email uh, icon will throw the link in there for you so you can go and view all of our previous sessions. They are actually quite awesome, if I do say so myself, because I featured in a lot of them. So that's why. They are awesome. They are, that's why they're awesome. <laughs> and last... But not least, thank you, magical, mystical, holistic icon for sending in the link. Um, and last but not least, I just want to introduce our amazing, brilliant panelists today. Um, and they're going to be helping us. These ladies are going to be talking email trends with us. So today we have Una Fella McCauley from Hilton. Give us a wave. <laughs> thank you. We've got Janine Hamilton from Actito. Woohoo! And Keisha Robinson from Ethos. There she is. Okay, so I'm gonna stop my sharing. So today, you know, I want you, like I said, get your questions into the chat. So use the chat box to my left, which is your right. <laughs> use the chat box there to answer, to put any of your questions and I will make sure that we do our best to answer it during the session. So while you guys are thinking and pondering about the email trends that will be influencing us in 2023, really get those minds tingling. I'm going to ask our panelists to introduce themselves today. So I'm going to pick someone at random. Keisha, please tell our viewers today who you are and what you do. Hi, everyone. Thank you for having me. Um, thanks, Adiola, for hosting today. And Una and Janine, thanks for sharing this conversation today. Um, I currently am a CRM deployment manager at Ethos Technologies, Inc. Um, what we do at Ethos is we provide a platform to um, kind of uh, revolutionize really how life insurance is obtained. Um, so you can get life insurance much quicker than the traditional way of doing so by going through our platform. Um, and I'm responsible for CRM deployment. So um, quite the technical side of email marketing and as well as other marketing channels, uh, mostly email. Um, and my experience includes both technical and strategy side. So I've been at Sephora, I've been at Udemy um, and I love email. <laughs> wow, <laughs> amazing. Look at that, brains and beauty. Um, okay, <laughs> Una, please introduce yourself to our viewers today. Hi, so, and again, thank you so much for having me. And Janine and Keisha, I can't wait to get into conversation with you both on this. Um, so I'm Una Fowler McCauley, and I'm a senior manager at Hilton within the email and mobile marketing team. I recently just celebrated my 10 year um, anniversary with Hilton, and I just to put it out there, but all of them have been within the email team. So email world is what I know. 
Um, I fell into email in 2009, probably like a lot of you where you just fall into email. Nobody just goes out there and looks for it yet. Give it time. Hopefully someday we'll have a university degree on it. Right. Um, but ever since then, it's grown into my career and it's one of my big passions, same as Keisha. Um, and the, but obviously working at Hilton, my biggest uh, passion is travel as well. So I've been very lucky to stay in some of the fabulous properties around, but also been able to collect a lot of the other email um, from a lot of other businesses as well and actually see what they're doing and try to incorporate that within our world and just yeah. being like, in awe of some of the stuff that's been sent. So I'm really, really excited for today to kind of take what I learned from here and put it back into Hilton's communications as well. Wow, amazing, a decade in Hilton. That's incredible. You must have seen the brand just kind of go from heights to heights. That's so phenomenal. Oh, I can't wait to hear your insights and your takes on some trends. Okay, so last but not least, Janine, please introduce yourself. Mm -hmm. Introduce yourself. Thank you for having me. And it's great to be on the panel with these two lovely ladies as well. Um, I work at Actiso, which is a customer data activation platform. And my team help our clients and our users to activate their customers to increase the value of their customer journeys so we're kind of in there doing things with the clients on behalf of the clients so I'm looking forward to kind of sharing the conversation with everyone here today and seeing what we look forward to for next year. This is amazing I feel like we've got a really good mix so we've got like a tech representative and two client side representatives you know one that's been in the lifestyle recreational space as well um, and I'm really excited to kind of hear all of your insights in regards to the trends and how you feel they can be adopted in 2023. So let's just get straight into it. Okay, first question. And guys that are watching, please utilize that question box, okay? I'm going to kick it off, but I want to see some questions in there. Even if you just want to know where my jumper is from, it's fine. <laughs> okay, first question. What trends do you see being used the most? It's quite a generic open question. I'm not going to throw it to anyone, but if there is someone that wants to kick this off in terms of, you know, the trends that you see people utilizing the most within their campaigns, maybe it's their marketing strategy, maybe it's their full suite of, you know, contact communications. What do you, what do you guys usually see people doing the most? It can be the very small list of things. Let's say like AI recommendations or. Yeah, I can jump in. I, I was actually going to say exactly that. Um, I was going to say the usage of data. So um, I think that there is a lot of focus on that before. I think it was more so like big players, really big companies that could afford, you know, sophisticated big systems um, and tech teams and, you know, mainly tech companies. But I think now that's kind of spreading around and people are understanding that um, you can you can make a lot of difference with, um, you know, having first party data and utilizing that in your in your communications. Um, and uh, and I think that's going to continue. So I don't know if it's it, I'd say it's really a trend because I don't think it's going to go anywhere. I think that's going to be sort of the future, but um, I would definitely say more so, uh, more folks understanding the importance of data. Mm. And I think that you know, there is more accessible systems, more range of systems. As you say, Keisha, people are capturing more first party data. You're building up what they can use. And I think for next year, what I think we'll see is, is much more kind of layering the segmentation, personalization, AI, you really build, putting all these blocks together yeah. rather than just doing one or the other. Um, I which, like you know, that. Been the thing in the past. Yeah. So instead of having each technology or each piece in silos, we're now going to start really incorporating them as a proper stack, like a burger. Yeah, absolutely. Ooh. And, you know, putting that idea of you know your customer first your customer yeah. they live in a segment there's things you can know about them that you can personalize with and then there's ways that you can use what you know of others to enhance their experience yeah Build, building up that layer cake okay so we're going for cake instead of burger no cake. <laughs> I'm, I'm much more of a cake person and i think with sugar in it makes more sense <laughs> you know, i felt like you wanted to jump in there 
Oh yes, the minute I heard personalization, it's like the good old classic personalization. It is not a trend, it is just the norm. And it is a case of if you have someone's first name, use it. Mm. Because we all love opening up that little birthday card that we get through the post because your name on it has your address on it. We open it. We love getting the emails as well because you're getting it from a brand that you've provided that information to. Now yeah. you're not your real name or not, that's a different story, but either way, you've provided that information and you've got it. And um, then just to kind of follow on, like it's the consistency of the personalization Mm -hmm. is a big one that's going to see across all the platforms. And especially as we look more to hyper personalized email strategy, just as we look at the different channels as well, because email's not dead as much as that trend is probably going to keep continuing. Um, But it's looking at how, with regards to the data, how we can pull that out and really give the customer the voice in order to say, this is what I want give it to me and give it to me in this way. Give me my content that really matches with me. Mm-hmm. No, mm-hmm. I agree. And it's interesting. I feel like with trends, I it's, it's quite hard to um, discern really and truly what's a trend and what's standard common practice. Because when you look at a lot of these articles that talk about the trends for, you know, the next year or the big trends within email marketing, what you tend to find is it's things that, we do on a day-to-day basis. So even just having a scour around, looking at all these different um, resources, you'll find things like automation is a trend or accessibility, which I think is something that we don't really talk about a lot um, because I still feel as though accessibility is a is very difficult to to kind of navigate within an email. You have a very finite amount of space you understand your audience in terms of their behaviors, but you don't actually know who they are in terms of their physical or their physicality. So customizing your your campaigns for somebody that you technically can't see in the physical sense is so hard to do. And I think it's a trend that comes up quite a lot, but one that I find marketers kind of veering away from. And I would probably say that dark mode kind of falls into that parameter of accessibility. Although some, in some cases you find some resources separating the two out, maybe just to expand the content list, who, who knows. But what do you guys feel about accessibility designing for you know, your users in mind? Is it a trend that you think is going to have traction or do you feel like it's kind of like a, it's a nice to have, it's something that we should be doing, but let's be real, we can't really execute it. What's your guys' view on that? For me and to thank Litmus for the words um, that accessibility isn't a trend, it is a founding pillar of user experience and design. Mm -hmm. So Litmus basically summed it up for us all, and I think that should be at the forefront where if you remove email and if you think about an actual building today, we need to have the accessibility in place. So why can't we put that in? Because we're very much focused on web, ensuring that that mm-hmm. has got everything that's required. We're putting dark mode in, although it's a lot more easier to code. Email, mm-hmm. everything's there. Um, accessibility, there is many Slack groups out there. There's a lot of information out there. There's a lot of great, very talented people. And there's a lot of groups that you can actually really reach out to in order to get their input as well um, to ask, okay, what is it you're looking for? Because in my optimistic, futuristic way of thinking, I would love to see an email service provider have that option, embed it within it. You don't Mm -hmm. have to think about it. You're capturing that instantly. And it's whether Mm -hmm. or not the customer or the guest opts in to that to allow you to have that information to say, Mm -hmm. actually, this is the type of communication I want. I want plain text and sort of maybe given the reason, but that's like future, future, future state. Um, But I think accessibility should just be a norm. It should be just built in, should be a part of a QA and a build. Do you guys hear me? I think I, for me, if we're thinking about the effort of personalization, making it relevant, it's just, it's another factor in that. It's like, yeah. it's not relevant to me if I can't read it, if I can't, you know, deal with it. It's, there's no point in you sending it to me. So I think you know, putting it into those boundaries probably makes it a bit more easy to grasp. It doesn't feel like something you're making a separate investment in. It's yeah. about how do you maximize 
the conversion, the engagement of all of your subscribe subscribers, regardless of you know what what their need is. Um, yeah. Because I think it's the one of the challenges that I see when talking to you know, people about it is it's it's this topic over there. We feel like we have to tackle the topic separately from what we're doing. It's not part of just our way of thinking when we're doing a new template, when we're thinking about a new campaign, are we thinking about these things from the basis the same way as we think about, you know, in your GDPR as at the yeah. foundation of a campaign? It's yeah. trying to bring it on those kind of levels, I think. But doing that in practice mm. is probably part of the challenge. I, I do whether. think that there's definitely an article that needs to be written because, um like you both have said, and rightly so, accessibility and litmus. Accessibility should just be the foundation. It should just be something that you do already. Just like, as you said, going into a building, there are certain things that you expect to see there. There are certain foundations, certain pillars. You know, they've thought about the customer, how they're going to use the space. It should be the same in terms of an email. And I guess we've come so far in our industry that it should be something that we naturally have pivoted towards as well. But we seem, like you said, Janine, we seem to shy away from it or it's the uh, the object in the corner that we'll deal with, but just not right now because we've got other pressing things. So, yeah, mm. I, I agree. It should be something that is baked into the everyday. We should be thinking about it as we're designing, as we're creating those templates. We should be thinking about the user, the intended user. Um, so, yeah, that's very cool. And I think it's it's going to play into one of the things that I I think we'll be seeing next year is there's going to be a lot of pressure on marketers to to do more. You know, we're already as email marketers people who are often quite stretched quite thinly yeah. with the comp, you know all the competition between the things that we want to do, the way we want to move our channel, you know, and our marketing forward, yeah. and the demands of the business need. You know, certainly, obviously, the UK is not in a great position right now I'm sure there'll be going to be lots of, of pressure on marketers, you know, email marketers in the UK to to deliver more stuff but I I don't know whether Chris, you agree with it it's I feel like next year there will be this level of pressure and we're going to have to compete for priority on things I mean I hope there is because <laughs> it's like it's like competition like breeds you know excellence and that'll all require us all to step up and for me i feel like accessibility is one of those things where it's like you know like you mentioned janine when when it's like when, when we're spread so thin having to meet all these different kpis and um you know expectations with all these different stakeholders it's like those things are placed on the back burner because it's not directly affecting revenue per se, right? Because we work, I think we're all here in, in for-profit businesses, right? So that's how it works. And, um, you know, again, to, to plug, uh, I don't know if you can see it, my, my litmus t-shirt. And like, I feel like I have to do like a YouTube, like this video is not sponsored by litmus because we're all like mentioning litmus, but I think litmus makes it easier because when you when you're running your your um you know your test through litmus you can see the accessibility factors and what you need to work on um and i think tools like that could can be very helpful as well um and and so i think you both mentioned una and janine to kind of include that as a part of your qa process and i feel like that's the best thing to do like include that as part of your process that way it's not like this extra separate thing it's it's number you know it's step number 99 in your QA process already um because mm. it's you know obviously a lot of times until there's like some and and <laughs> a trend that we probably could mention is like diversity unfortunately it's something that shouldn't be a trend but it it becomes trendy you know and uh I feel like diversity and accessibility is one that when it, it's 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 like it's sad that it becomes trendy, but at the same time, it pushes things forward. So I'd like to see that happen more and more where people are, you know, that's that's kind of one of the top, um, uh, you know, priorities for diversity, diversity and accessibility. And I feel that would help help push push it along as well in email marketing. Yeah, I, I, I do agree. And I think, um, yeah, for those watching, kind of having incorporating 
accessibility. So from the new year, start looking at how you can optimize your templates and look at different areas of your campaigns that um, may not be as inclusive, which is very a very broad ranging mm -hmm you know, term, but in the sense of your emails and trying to make that the standard as you do with all of your emails, when you check check for different things, that should just be incorporated as one of the standard. And I think it's a really good kind of trend to, you know, to start going, to start the year off right with and to also be a trendsetter. So, because we don't see that many people doing it. So if you start to, if you start to adopt it, you ultimately become the trendsetter and people start looking to you in terms of how to make their emails even more, um, you know, accessible. So get get to it, guys. Get to it. Beat them at their bloody own game. Um, right. OK. So I want to, you know, I can't see any questions, by the way, guys. You're just kind of listening to us lovely ladies chat. But please ask some questions. Um, OK. So my my next question for you guys is, what trends do you see um, coming into 2023? I, and again, I feel like all of these questions are very trend, 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 trend. I know this is a trends um, <laughs> webinar. I'm very aware, but um, <laughs> all the questions will start to sound the same. So feel free to veer off into the sunset and give okay. me different perspectives. Yeah. <laughs> In terms of trends for 2023, um, actually, Kath and I were asked to give our top, t top three trends um, on behalf of Halon. And um, mine was actually, it, well, I kind of coined Forrester's new term of they've evolved customer centricity to co customer obsession. Um, <laughs> and it is... You know, it's not just about being customer focused. You have to obsess over your customer, but every single vertical within your business has to have the same obsession. We all have to be aligned and have that customer front of mind. So it means that even our sales targets or business objectives are actually driven by the customer's needs and wants and not necessarily by we need to make X amount of profit, you know, year on year to be our quarter for luck that has to kind of almost go out the window, not out the window, but it is a secondary priority. And one way in which that's amplified, and we kind of spoke about it, is the use of AI, but going beyond how we use AI at the moment. So AI to the point where it becomes your personal PA in your inbox. The, this new piece of technology studies you as a user. It studies your behavior. It studies where you click. It also studies your behavior on site. So it actually builds a rapport with you. Creepily, it builds a rapport with you and starts to understand your likes and dislikes. So it doesn't just serve products you've browsed. It starts to go deeper. It goes deeper into product catalogs. It even starts serving products or categories you haven't even looked at. But because it studied you, it believes that you will have an affinity to these other recommendations. So it's taking AI and product recommendations to the next level by like essentially obsessing um, over the customer. And I do think that we're going to see brands use this piece of technology to really drive um, that customer loyalty. Oh, we got a question. Um, to drive that customer loyalty and to drive that impact in a subtle way, but from the tech point of view, it's actually quite aggressive. So, you know, those are one of the key trends or one of the trends that I think is going to be a big deal in 2023. It's this kind of big brother-esque um, AI, but to drive conversions, but also utilizing other social channels like WhatsApp. Um, WhatsApp for business is becoming a really big thing. I'm a prolific shopper. So for anyone that doesn't know, I am a confessed shopaholic. I shop in my sleep. I've already told these ladies about my very um, real life daydreams. I <laughs> I even daydream about what I'm gonna wear the next day just to sit at home in my bedroom. I love shopping. Um, and um, Pretty Little Thing have a, is it Pretty Little Thing? Misguided have utilized WhatsApp business for their customer service um, proposition. And where we see this going now is that data from WhatsApp being leveraged in your email marketing campaign. So if someone has had a complaint about a particular product or about a service, that is fed into your 
your CRM and you can then power off automations that actually combat that person's experience. So you can then fire off a discount or you can fire off an alternative product. You can fire off, you know, a, a really lovely thank you message. So really leveraging all of these different social apps to power your email marketing even more. Um, so those are just some of the trends that I've kind of been noting for 2023 that I do hope picks up. Um, but what do you guys think about some of these things? It can be big, it can be small, it can be on Mars, it can be here in the UK. But um, yeah. For me, those kind of trends are uh, about seeing omni-channel in a different way. It's like we talk about omni-channel, but we think about it in quite a company business first kind of way it's like we want to be on the channel we want to make sure the offers in the same in you know each channel that there's consistent branding and yeah. like actually let's make ourselves much more customer centric as you say yeah. it's, it's about how their experience is the same it's the service that they're getting everywhere it's that feeling that they're not talking to you know, different people in different places when they're speaking, speaking exactly. to us and our, and our brand. So I think it's it's taking some of the ideas that we've had for a while this year and trying to really twist those into being customer-centric in their thinking rather than actually just kind of fulfilling the brand centricity. Hmm. Um, so I think that's, you know, trying to plug in as much as possible to that. Awesome. Anybody yeah, else? I definitely I agree with that. Um, it, it's it's like a pet peeve of mine. I I spent about a decade in customer service, and like it's just it just seems like we're 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 when we're not customer centric, it's like we're missing out on a lot. Like we're leaving so much on the table, um, and then it's like we kind of forget that uh, you know we're all consumers as well. How would you feel if 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 a business was just sort of shoving something down your throat, um, and just to sort of add to this but also I see the question in the chat and it's like it's so funny Janine that you brought up sort of doing omni-channel basically wrong that's the thing that that I, I wish would would die <laughs> so I'm tired of getting a text message and an email at the same time this is the same thing it's it's unnecessary <laughs> you're you're wasting budget you're wasting marketing budget um like you know it could be so as as uh, Eddie Ola and Janine you were saying it could be so much better um used if we were looking at things like where what channels are are the are each is each consumer um engaging in there's mm -hmm. no need to send them the same message in email in sms in whatsapp on Instagram, like, <laughs> you know, let's see where they are. At least, at least a variation, at, at least a variation in a time of day. I don't want to receive the same message in three channels at 2.30 p.m. all at once from the same company. Like it just doesn't, you know, make any sense. So that's the thing that I, I hope that we stop doing as a collective mm -hmm. unit, as marketers, and, uh, you know, think through timing, frequency, you know, um, how we're how we're speaking to customers in, in different channels and what customers are engaging in what channels, you know. If something is really important, like that's one thing. If the customer has opted into receiving all these notifications in all these different channels, channels, that's another thing as well. But I think we can still be more creative as as marketers and and um, you know, kind of make it more of a one to one conversation versus talking at our customers. Yeah. I I, I agree. I think yeah, everyone is kind of singing the same song in terms of customer customer obsession, as Forrester has now coined. Customer obsession is key in 2023 and just ensuring that really looking at everything holistically, um, putting the customers front and center. So it's not about driving the revenue it's about driving the customer satisfaction which will then in turn bring the revenue and so it is a bit of a mental shift you know the the way in which you speak to your customers within your emails the tone and language needs to be more customer focused rather rather than sales focused even down to imagery those small things um being customer obsessed um, can be in the smallest and finest of details and they can make such a big difference. Um, even within some of our clients, we've tested um, language. So using different emotions, whether we're covert and overt, so that 
we can then synchronize all of the other messages within our automations to kind of replicate that emotion to drive more sales. And what we found is um, being covert. Is it covert? Yes. No, overt. <laughs> yeah. Being more overt because it, this this particular product is very men. It's a very big men population. Um, and men just seem to want to be, you know, just give it to me straight up. Um, so we found the straight upness in all of the different automations um, really serves the customer well. So, you know, where we were going from a business objective or a business led way of communicating, which wasn't driving that much results, being more customer focused, more customer obsessed, we're now seeing those yields. So definitely something that um, you've, you guys at home that are watching or in your office um, should start looking at how can you implement some forms of customer obsessed ways of thinking, because that in itself is a trend. Right, it doesn't necessarily always have to be a piece of tech, it can be a way of thinking or a new way of doing something, it doesn't always have to be a physical piece of technology. And it loops around a little bit with you know, our earliest topics, you know, it's about mm -hmm. having segmentation in the way you think as well. It's like, yeah, you know, the personalization there is personalization, but there's, there's layers above and below that in the terms tape. of how do you make it exactly. How do you make it you know, meaningful to the to those yeah. individuals that you're contacting? Okay. Uh, yeah. Me. I was going to say, and what we say is yes, and because I love all of that. Um, it's also if you think more to towards the pain points as well of how we're mm -hmm. seeing, like as he says, like okay, we're spamming, but they're getting the email, they're getting the messages, they're potentially getting a text message, they're getting all of that. But it's also thinking about. Um, the pain points as well that the guests come in or the customers come in. It's, let's look at the new technologies that we've got out there. Um, for email, for example, let's build the carousels and let's build those forms and let's have that basis in there so we're not losing a customer, we're not losing a guest. We're actually better, probably able to better upsell and actually complete the form, everything in there and potentially be able to change out the communication more. And probably from there, we can actually ask them, is email the right way for you or would you like to hear from this or what time? Like it was actually embed that all within. I know AMP's fairly new and not a lot of ESPs have jumped on in that, but it's one thing I am very excited, um, especially within our emails to kind of jump in with that because it's a technology that if web can do it, well, well why can't email? So I'm so glad like, you mentioned that because that's one of the trends that I had also kind of claimed is interactivity in emails. And when you were saying do the form in the email, I was like, she's talking about AMP. Um, and it still hasn't really taken off. So are you allowed to expand a little bit more, you know, and just like your thoughts on interactivity in emails or how it is as a trend or you, how you've seen its um, benefits? From interactivity within emails, I think it's a given because we're Look, very interested. Sadie, Sadie has also said she would love to hear more about it. So I'm sorry, you really oh. have to the juicy stuff now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Sadie, just for you, I will continue on. <laughs> um, so AMP for email is very new. There is an actual Slack group as well available um, for anyone that wants to learn more. There's a lot of information based out there within Hilton ourselves. It's, it's relatively new within our communication. So it's something we're going to start to look to really sort of move forward with hopefully next year um, mm -hmm. in order to kind of really put in because if you think about the many touch points a customer or a guest can come in on, it's if, if we can elevate, say, one of those within email, so we're not having to go, oh, click here, oh, go off to the web page, fill out the form, open it, okay, we've got it, where it's like, no, no, we're going to capture everything in mm -hmm. here within this form. And I think it's just going to be one of those trial and errors, I think, and I think it's just going to be across every industry to see, does it actually work for you? Do you need it in every email? What exactly is the purpose of this? Um, I can't really say too much more on that because we haven't actually really um, put it in there, but it is a technology I am very excited with, just with regards to the interactivity that you can have within yeah. there, the amount of user content, generated content, you can then show up with a guest or a customer, I keep saying guest, sorry, with a customer um, as well within there. And that, I think then that goes back to the personalization, having that consistent um, personalized journey 
put in place yeah. as well for it in order then to ensure that we aren't texting them, we aren't emailing them, we aren't hitting them up on social with the same message and we're able to better communicate out with it. And then with AMPC with it as well, it allows you to bring social information. It's allowed you to be more interactive. It's real-time information you're putting up there and it's to capture um, really anything within it. Now, if I've spoken out of term, Jean Keisha, please jump in and uh, let me know. I I think, I no, not at all, Kate. I turn at all. I, I can see it being the one that falls by the wayside next year, though, because I think it requires email marketers to really think through the whole journey. And we've always struggled with that balance with, you know, going onto the website, having influence on what's on the website. And it's tempting to, to bring some of that control back. But I think we've just got to balance that oh, yeah. Yeah. what's what's the right journey and being that you know, customer I think about what the right right way to go is yeah no I agree and I, I you know what amp and interactivity excites me even though I haven't seen a great deal of it I just mm -hmm. think it could be so fantastic um mm -hmm. I was at the inbox expo in the summer and um there was a company and now I can't remember the company's name, but there was a company who's released a new, uh, almost like a tech stack that actually helps deliver AMP for email. I will make sure that it goes into the next holistic email marketing uh, newsletter, just in case anybody wants to find it, or I'll put it on my LinkedIn once I remember the name. Uh, but essentially, they were talking about the different use cases for AMP, and you can have gamification, so you can have interactive games. Um, within the email and that would be probably more for your younger audiences like Gen Z so if you just kind of mm -hmm. not necessarily trying to drive a conversion but bring about awareness about a new product you can turn that into a game and um, you know that's a really nice way of using the technology in a fun way without having to overthink the overall journey um, but it's also a really great way of establishing community so again not everything always has to have the end goal of a sale but you can have polls um, you can have people share their opinions within the email. So you're gathering insights, um, again, kind of building on that customer, um, that customer usage, that customer experience. One way that I really wanted to try and implement it when I was working at The Guardian was um, using it to upsell donations. So where someone would naturally have to go off onto the website, perhaps um, log in, then see all the different options to contribute, they could all be done within the email. You know, so it kind of takes away a lot of the friction, but the way in which that could be powered even more. And I've seen some emails, I think even Outlook has an integration with PayPal, is that all of that can be linked in within one email. So the payment is smooth. The taking of the donations is a lot more smoother. And then they're fired off with the welcome email straight away. So I think there are so many different ways that it can be used in just just in terms of reducing the friction for a customer. So not again, not everything always has to be about driving the end sale because that will come after. You know, once they've had a great experience, they are going to check out your website and they probably will end up converting. So it's about building, using AMP or interactivity as a way to engage and further segment that brand affinity with your with your customers and your, and your subscribers. And that's what I like about it. But I, I know it hasn't really taken off. And I, I do hope that it's something that flows into 2023. Um, Sadie, does that answer your question? Oh, Una, Janine, did you want to add? No, I was no. only going to say, I think it's your last point, Ayo, is a really good one about, you know, it, it needs to be for a reason as yeah. well. You know, I don't think we're going to get a huge amount of adoption next year if it's pure gamification. You know, there's a lot of people that will struggle to justify the time and effort for gamification stuff but you know thinking about it in terms of you know, increasing the collection of first, zero and first party data like that's something that has really tangible business benefits and that if you can reduce the friction to do that using AMP maybe more more people will start you know, putting exactly. that time and effort in. I'm, I'm glad to hear someone say something positive about Outlook. I didn't know that there was Outlook had an integration with PayPal. We're always, we're always just haggling uh, Outlook and, and jumping on them in so many ways. I'm glad to hear something positive about Outlook. Um, but, I still um, have an Outlook address and everyone's like, you still have Outlook? What, who are you? But I just think I love the inbox. <laughs> <laughs> it might be in, in the one percent. I know. 
um, but I was just going to say, Janine, I'm glad you said that. You, you were the first to say it. I didn't want to be the bad news bear, but I don't think that it's going to continue much longer either because oh. uh, like without there being a change, I really enjoy it as well. I see that I've seen results from it, um, but I've also seen... Uh, I've also seen missed opportunities because there appear to be results where the tech failed, you know, because it is more complicated than the rest of, of email, um, you know, the more static email. Um, mm. It's, 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 it can be difficult to, to get it right. Um, and, and I don't know if you were talking about movable ink Adiola, but I, I have used movable ink in the past and they do no. work with, um, with interactivity and emails um again not sponsored by Google Inc., but yeah. they, they do some good work with interactive emails um and you know but you just have to make sure that that you get it right because you you could have a great idea and then if the tech is not right it doesn't it doesn't matter you know it can yeah. turn into a poor experience for the customer instead of just the usual that they're that they're um that they're used to with with you. Um, also, you know the issues. The other issues with AMP is the uh, um, sort of the lack of adoption. You know, I, I don't. I think in Gmail. I think I don't think it works in Gmail still, if I'm not mistaken. Um, mm -hmm. You know, if I if I have misspoken, please someone call it out. But I don't think that it's it's it's. Um, I don't think that it's supported in Gmail. Um, but of course, there's ways around everything. You know, there's fallback solutions and stuff like that. And I know that for, I don't know about in other countries, but in the US, a lot of times Gmail is like the, um, you know, most popular uh, email client that, that customers are using. And yeah. I think that that limits it as well. But hopefully um, the great uh, email consortium, I think it's called, that has been created recently with some all-stars and in the in the email geek space um hopefully hopefully uh those folks can get some some traction with things like that because i believe one of most like their main uh i believe their main sort of goal is to get email clients on the same on the same page and stuff like that um and again if i'm wrong please call it out uh but definitely want to um shout the that group out because i think they're, they'll do some good things for the industry no all really good and i think um it does it was only working on gmail at at, at a certain point mm -hmm. um or only compatible really with gmail didn't they create it sorry didn't they create it i thought it was like a google thing initially mm -hmm. So maybe yeah. I have it backwards. No, 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 you don't. Um, you don't, you don't. Um, and I have seen like other tech companies try and improve on that technology within itself so that it can be a lot more accessible. But I think it's still the the fear of it not working and just mm -hmm. messing up the entire customer experience. It, 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 Again, it's almost like you have to be an early adopter and pave the way, prove its success, and then others will then surely follow. It's just... Like how everyone jumped on board an iPhone and now look, we're all hooked. So <laughs> I'm switching back. I'm switching back. Samsung has won me over with the flip phone. No, I'm going back to Android. <laughs> no, you can't. Android's destroyed my life. I I've got a story, but I don't know this time. It's a very good story about how Samsung phone destroyed my life. But um. <laughs> Send me a LinkedIn message. LinkedIn message. I want to know. I will. I I will. Yeah, I want to know too. <laughs> it, it basically involves their stupid, stupid interface. When you put it to your phone, things start activating by themselves. And I was talking to my sister and she was uh, slagging off someone's baby name choice. And uh, I had opened the message in WhatsApp and my face had pressed the record button. So it recorded the whole conversation. And then when my face came off the phone, it released the message. And this was before WhatsApp allowed you to delete. <laughs> so, Great feature. Bloody Samsung. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we've all been guilty of one or two of those. So <laughs> That's one bloody trend I'm not taking into 2023. Ban Android. <laughs> And actually, talking about banning Androids, um, 
what trends do you feel like should fall by the wayside? Keisha, we know you're saying interactivity. Um, we I don't will. think it should. I just think it will. It may. I don't think it should. I don't want it to. I, I hope that you know we can we can advance it. I, I just I'm, I just think it may just because it brings so many complications. Okay, so as well as interactivity or um, what trends do you guys feel will kind of like not be adopted as much within the new year or should be let go? And again, don't think of trends just as tech. It can also be, um, you know, ways of doing things, ways in which you interact with your customers. It doesn't also always necessarily need to be a piece of technology. Um, for instance, well, I, I say, I guess dark mode is a piece of technology, mm. but, you know. Um, <laughs> I think I, there's, there's one that I'd love to fall by on the wayside. I think the chances are slim, but I'd love it to. And that's the trading driven messaging where you know that your customer base, your email list is not interested in that. But you've got the, tra the trading team right behind you going, we need to sell this. We need to sell this. And I think, you know, we really need some better comebacks to that demand, some, yeah. some good trade-offs and yeah. to put ourselves in a position where we can turn, you know, turn to the trading team and say, but how about this instead? You know, have it, having that and not feeling that we have to deliver all of these things that everyone's asking, you know, asking for yeah. from us because yeah. it's a lot, you, of, a lot of pressure. Could you elaborate? I, I think maybe I'm not familiar with the terminology. What do you mean by uh, trading? So the I'm team thinking, that I'm thinking buying... like trading stocks, like so. <laughs> <laughs> no, not quite, not quite. No, trading as so the the team that are managing the stock level who know what products are in the warehouse, and they're saying, you know, I've got, you know, twenty ah, gotcha. twenty thousand okay. of these. Mm -hmm. You've got you've got to send an email on that twenty thousand to your list. Mm -hmm. you know, my list is not. Interest. I know, you know, I've done the analysis. I know, understand my list. I know what they're into. This is not it. Yeah, and being yeah. able to have that conversation a lot better and push back. And I know it was something that you know, came up when we did um, an event recently of you know being prepared for that conversation um, and better prepared in 2023 to you know go. Hey, I know my list. I know what they need. I know what they want. That's not it. It's this. Yeah. <laughs> I think that would be, yeah, Tra trading, driving too much of the marketing thing would be my ideal one to fall by the wayside next year. Nice. Oh, I think that's big in retail. I think that's definitely, having worked in retail, I definitely had my share of conversations <laughs> about, like, you know, what <laughs> what is this really going to drive, though, <laughs> you know, because um, if they're, if they're, if, if we've got so much inventory, it could just be because people don't want it. <laughs> yeah. And I think that kind of ties back take the into, L sometimes. That ties back into being more customer obsessed and less business objective led. And I think that is definitely a trend within itself, you know, kind of really listening to the customer and not always putting the business needs ahead of the customer's needs. And it, it, it's a very fine balance because it's very hard to turn around to the trading team and say, do you know what, we're not going to do that. Um, so it has to be either your A-B split testing, so a, a portion of your database gets that trading message and then the other half gets what you feel would be a more desirable message and use that as a way to leverage, you know, how becoming more customer obsessed, you know, will win for your business or for your organization. Um, so yeah, that's definitely, I think it all really does tie back into that customer obsessed kind of route and not negating the business needs, but just making sure that the business thinks more of the customer rather than its targets. And it's so hard. It's it, it's so hard to do because I always say we are in the business of making money. Um, that That's what we've been kind of like tasked to do. But we as marketers have to find creative ways to do that. And I think proving that being customer obsessed is the new tactic and the new way in which we can drive revenue. I think that will be a great way of kind of aligning the business goals and the business objectives to be more focused on on the customer, which is quite interesting. Um, I would definitely say 
you know, there aren't that many things that I would say I would like to see fall by the wayside. Because, again, it's quite tricky when you're talking about trends, because it essentially is what we do in our day to day. The, the way in which we work and the trends that have been specified are essentially things that, that we're doing, but there's almost like a utopia version of it. So like we said, with interactivity, there is a utopia version of interactivity, but on some lengths or in some ways, we're kind of doing that anyway. Um, I think I would love to stop seeing, I would love to see, um, you know, the video stills when people incorporate video stills with the play button to kind of give mm -hmm. the idea that uh, the email within itself is interactive. I just want that to go either commit and um, implement, you know, a, a tool like iMail that actually plays video in your emails or just send a damn link to the bloody YouTube video. Like it's just, I don't need a picture. I think <laughs> that, that can go. But again, there's a new trend in that in itself. So, you know, the whole cinematography um, gifts being elevated to actual videos playing in your email. It is a thing. I've seen luxury brands adopt that. Like, um, I don't drive, so now I'm going to botch this car name up. Is it Lexus? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm a princess. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Bentley, they've sent they've sent out customer emails where there is a really beautiful video that plays as soon as you open it, and it kind of gives you a sense of the brand, the sense of what they want you to talk about or what they want to talk about to you. That's kind of like the future in how you kind of bring people in and show people what who you are as a brand, what your brand identity is, using video in that way in a really clever way. Um, I think is definitely going to be a big trend, especially for more high-end brands. I think even brands like Hilton, um, building upon the customer experience, whether they've just checked in and you want to send them a really beautiful kind of video style content about, you know, showing them their room or mm -hmm. what, what they um, can, you know, what they're going to, to see as they arrive, you know, kind of having that immersive experience in email ahead of time, getting them excited for their trip. I think those are really nice ways in which we can start implementing trends and thinking of the customer. I told you what, I, I love to talk. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I was gonna say, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, go on, go on. I was gonna say, um, I have to admit, I just recently, a few weeks ago, told someone to do the still video shot with the play button. So I'm gonna have to go back to them and tell them to, to use a GIF. <laughs> We're sorry, you know, the budget is tight. <laughs> okay, I'll allow it, it's fine. We've got to start from I'm somewhere. I'm going to just tell them to use a GIF. I'm just telling them to use a GIF. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to tell Adiel said she doesn't want to see any more still shots of the label. <laughs> but I'm it, naming and shaming anyone that I see. Yeah. Well, another, one thing that I'd like to see go is like email opens. Like we, we, why are we still talking about email opens? Like I don't want anyone to ask me you know, how many opens did this get? It doesn't matter. We don't know. <laughs> Apple opened them. We don't know. Yeah. <laughs> we do not know. <laughs> so it's like, you know, and then it, and it's even arguable that, you know, was that even the best metric to be looking at in the first place before it was unreliable, you know? So I'd, I'd like to uh, change our thinking in, in, in that way as well, um, as well as the information that we're reading from the data that we have. So we're doing all this work to, to to pull in this first party data and you know most ESPs nowadays are marketing automation platforms because nowadays they're more than ESPs um, are you know showing us all these metrics we've, we've got analytics teams we've got you know visual uh, technology or, or um, sorry uh, visualization software applications and all this stuff uh, but then we're looking at it and we need to look at it and then listen to it as well. And, you know, yeah. that should help us with being more customer centric because they're telling us what they want by how they're engaging. Um, and I'd really like to uh, sort of like widen the interest in pulling insights from data versus um, kind of just looking at it surface level I, I want us to start looking at it um or i'm not gonna say start because a lot of us have been but continue um to look at it to to gain insights you know in a way to say okay this is how our customers are talking to us and you know what do they want yeah what are they telling us that they want yeah, yeah. 
hundred percent. Just can we just get rid of not believing the data and just believe it? Because yeah, it's like strange. facts and figures and it's there and right. it tells you <laughs> what we should and shouldn't do and test, test, test is the way forward as well. But it's like yeah. You're mentioning yeah. some good stuff right at the end, Una. Like <laughs> I just I just stick with the, my other two amazing panelists are saying I was like, I'm just gonna jump right in there with the one big punchline at the end. <laughs> Damn, <laughs> testing is always a good thing to do, but um, we're kind of coming up to the end now. So I've got a wrap up question for each of you. Um, all right. So you're in the elevator. Picture this elevator. Use your active imaginations. It's a really beautiful, sexy elevator. Maybe it's quite mahogany with some gold finishing. And there's, <laughs> and there's a person who is new to the world of email and they're in this lift and you're all going up to the 50th floor. What important tip or information would you like to impart on this person before you reach the 50th floor? Una. Test, test everything. Test everything and personalize it because your customer or your will tell you what they want. And it's just keep testing because just think of the incremental value you will bring in. Test, test, test. Thank you, wonderful. You've made it to the floor and they're very happy. Keisha, what? I'm gonna take more of a, yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say, I'm gonna take more of a mindset approach and say, um, you know, practice your confidence and practice stakeholder management. Um, Cause those are gonna be really important because once you know, once you have all these skills and, and you can look those up, you can go to conferences, you can go to seminars, you can go, you can attend, you know, emailing more and learn things. Um, but if you are, if you don't have the confidence to uh, speak up about what you know, and to manage stakeholders by, you know, knowing how to communicate effectively, it doesn't matter what you do, because it, it won't, it won't get heard, it won't get seen. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Love that. Very, very nice one. And Janine, do you have one in regards to trends that you would like to impart to this person before you get to the 50th floor? Mm, I don't know whether it's trend, well, a little bit. Um, privacy, privacy, prefix, like putting the idea just because we could see that and we could do that is that something that our customer has actually consented to us doing are we do we have that understanding that they're happy with this ex experience that we're going to offer to them and giving them the chance you know we've we've introduced a lot of quite granular tracking consent so we can separately opt in to different types of you know tracking and things trying to put privacy right at the center of what it means to give a good experience to our customers as well. Oh, I really like that. I, really, really good. Some very good tips there. And, you know, and now we've come to the end of our seminar session. So, you know, it's a bit of a bummer. I think we will, we will be back next year. But um, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. I've, you know, thank you, thank you, Sadie, for your question. Um, it's it's been a pleasure, uh, you know, running these sessions with you for the last year. Um, you know, we really would love your feedback and all of your um, comments. So if you have time, put them in the chat. How do you feel it went? Um, can you, everyone here, just give me a big hand in thanking our gold sponsors iterable and engage and our silver sponsors rpe origin and actito for making this webinar possible so thank you so much and obviously we can't go without thanking our lovely lovely speakers today so thank you so much una janine and keisha for providing your valuable insights for taking the time out today really really appreciate you and this is the last episode of the year so thank you so much for spending time with us today i'm just so happy and i hope to see you all next year Thank you. Thanks for us. Bye, everyone. Thank Have a great much. day. Bye, everyone. See you. Bye. Bye.